Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. God is good how often? All and all the time. All the time. Find somebody nearby you this morning. Look at them and say, neighbor, neighbor. God, loves God loves you. And I do too. And if you love me as much as I love you, then nothing can break. I love in two. Now, if God been good to you, just take a moment to give the Lord a praise. For surely, I know that God has been good to all of us. Better than we deserve. Better than we have earned. God has been good. I know I'm not the only person in here that God blesses you in spite of you. In spite of the choices that you've made and in spite of the decisions that you made. Aren't y'all glad this morning that God is not like people that always remembers who you were and where you were and what you were involved in. But God said, you know what, now that you come to me, I've forgotten about all of that stuff and I've washed it away. And now you can't hold nothing against me. If you got a problem with me, take it up with God because God has already forgiven me. I'm so glad that I serve a God that is not in the business of holding yesterday against you but in the business of forgiving you of your sins and giving you another opportunity we thank you for those of you that are here today bless those of you that are visiting with us um we thank for those of you that are watching us via live stream god bless you we're glad to have you here in our midst on today and prayerfully something will be said that will bless you and help you in your walk um with the lord y'all i'm happy this morning uh check and put them pictures up there for me i'm happy I'm happy this morning. I'm happy this morning. We got a we had a we had an early arrival. We had an early arrival. Uh, I was at the dentist's office getting teeth pulled out my mouth. And I got a call saying we need to go to the hospital. So I had gauzes in my mouth, bleeding out in my head over to the hospital, but the Lord blessed us with Trevante Tremon Peterson Jr. Amen. So y'all in luck. I ain't going to be up here long. I got to get back to my baby. My little puka wooka. I got to get back to him. I got to get back to him. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Amen. 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 I promise you I won't be long, but I'll be strong. Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45, beginning at verse number 5. And we will read down to verse number eight. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, Lord, and hear my humble cry, Lord, and why, while on others thou art calling, Master, and do, do not pass me. And y'all call him your Savior, oh sweet Savior, why don't you hear my, my humble cry, Lord, and why? While on others thou art calling, Master, and do, do not pass me. Mm Say he don't know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, and why, while on others I are calling. 
Master and do, do not pass me. Genesis chapter 45, beginning at verse number 5. The Bible says, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me over here. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve a prosperity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, it was not you that sent me, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all the house and a ruler throughout all Egypt. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. I want you to look over and encourage somebody this morning. Just look at them and say, the Lord will make a way somehow. Now, see, they don't believe it. I guess they ain't never needed God to come and do anything for them. Find you somebody else and say, the Lord will make a way somehow. I want to talk to you today about how God wants to provide for you. Specifically, I want to use the Old Testament pattern of how God dealt with the children of Israel. There were four ways that he provided for them and he will provide for you in this time that I'm speaking to you today. And the first way that God provides for his people, number one, is that God uses the hand of man. In Genesis chapter 45, we're told of the story of Joseph and his brothers. They came down from a foreign land, and they are down there in a famine. And Joseph said to them, don't be afraid, y'all. Don't trip. God sent me down here before you into this land so that I could, with my own hands, take care of you and give you food in the time of your famine. I will feed you with my hands, Joseph said to his brothers, the same ones that had done him wrong. The same brothers that sold him into slavery, the, the same brothers that ripped off his coat of many covers and covered it with animals' blood and, and took it back to his daddy and acted like some ravenous animals had taken him out of here. Those same brothers, he said, you know what? God sent me down here, not for me to try to get revenge on y'all, but so that I could be a blessing in your life. And the first way that God provides is through the hand of man. And don't be fussy about about how God does that. Don't say who God can use and who he can use to bless you. Because what I've discovered is that God will use those that you don't even think about to be a blessing in your life. God used Pharaoh to provide for Joseph. Pharaoh, y'all. He used Pharaoh to provide for Joseph, and Joseph was used to provide for his family. And God, when he's going to bless you, will use the hand of man. That's why in Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38 is so powerful. It says, give and it shall be what? Given unto you. What? Good measure. Press down, shaken together. Then what it gonna do? It gonna run all over. It's gonna run over into your bosom. Now notice that men, it said it's gonna come from the hands of men. Hands of other individuals, they'll give it into your bosom. But the first part of that is on you. When he said give, now as long as you give, God will make sure that there are people that give into your bosom. I, and I, I'm sure you've heard this story a time. If you've heard, I'm going to tell it to you again. But that was a widow woman, and she didn't have much. She was an older lady, an elderly woman, and she was living in her home, and she didn't have nothing but some peanut butter and jelly. And, and y'all, she was walking to her kitchen, and she got to praying, oh, Lord, I'm hungry. Lord, 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 would you send me down here a loaf of bread? And, and she got to praying fervently, y'all. And, and by this time, she was talking real loud and said, Oh, Lord, would you please send me a loaf of bread? And, and y'all, she kept on saying that. And she kept on praying until the neighbor next door heard what it was that she was saying. And, and, and mind you, her neighbor was an atheist. And, and he didn't believe in God. And, and he got tired of hearing her pray to God that, that wasn't real real in his mind and he climbed up on the roof and, and he dropped down a loaf of bread down the chimney and, and, and when the bread came down the chimney she started shouting glory 
Hallelujah. God has given me a loaf of bread for my peanut butter and my jelly. And y'all, here come the old devil. He just had to go on over there to rain on the woman's party. And he went over there and knocked on the woman's door. And when she opened the door, he said, why are you making so much noise? And she said, God just gave me a loaf of bread. He said, lady, God didn't give you that loaf of bread. I heard you praying. I climbed up on the ceiling and I dropped the loaf of bread down through the chimney. God didn't have nothing to do with that. Y'all, then she started to shout for real. She started, she started to give God glory for real then he said I don't understand he said what's your problem she said Lord the Lord gave me a loaf of bread and he used the devil to deliver it to me God will provide for you through the hand of man and don't you ever forget that. Don't you forget that God will use the very people that are out for you. The very people that are out against you. The very people that are digging ditches trying to take you down and destroy you. God will use those very people. God will use those very setbacks and those setups to be a booster for you to get to where it is that God wants you to be in this life. God can use, and don't say it has to be this kind of person or this kind of man. God can use anybody that he want to use, anywhere, anytime, to bless you and to meet your needs. Now, here's the big point of this. God will not let you depend on any individual for too long. Be careful if you start depending on one individual for too long. Because God wants you to understand that the person is being used. God calls them to give into your bosom and your seed calls them to give. But they are not your source. God is your source. And the second way that God will provide for you is not only through the hand of man, but secondly, most importantly, through the hand of God. Supernatural blessings from his own hand. You see, after Joseph had provided for 70 years for his family, the Bible says that there arose another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph nor his God, and he cut all the food off y'all. And suddenly, the hand of man that had been looking to feed them, God cut that hand off. God broke that link and now they had to believe God to send them their resources. And the Bible says over there in the book of Numbers that God rained down manna from heaven and began to feed the children of Israel. He supernaturally liked the dew coming down every morning, y'all. There was just enough food for one day's supply for every household, y'all. And God, by his own hand, fed those people. I want you to understand that God broke the link, y'all. And he said, you've been depending on that man's hand for too long. But now I want to show you that sometimes I'll supply your need, not by man's hand, but by my own hand. As a matter of fact, I'll even sever. And if you have been depending on somebody's hand that's been blessing you, maybe it's an employer's hand and that relationship has been severed. Don't you ever, church, become afraid and fearful because that hand is not your source. God's hand is your source and God will break the link with any other source that you trust more than him. Jesus says in John chapter 15, without me, you can't do nothing. Nothing. You can't do anything. He said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And without me, Jesus says, unless you're connected to me, unless you're plugged up to me, you will not be able to produce any fruit. Paul put it like this. My dependency is upon thee. This is called forced dependency, church. And to be honest, I think our ego sometimes kind of hates that kind of stuff. Our ego hates depending on God. 
We, we love to be so blessed that we can have everything that we want and, and everything that we desire. And we don't have to ask for this and, and we don't have to ask for that. But some of y'all can testify and be honest and say, Preacher, I thank God for the down times. Not necessarily the days that I was up, but I thank God for the days that I was down. Because in those days that I was down, I learned how even the more how to trust in God. I learned how even the more how to depend on God. I learned how even the more to put my faith in God. So now the next time I find myself down in the valley, I don't freak out because I know the same God that brought me up out of this valley the last time is the same God that's going to deliver me out of this valley this time. Somebody give the Lord a praise if you know that you couldn't get yourself out of it and God had to come and help you get out of your mess. And so all along, church, he'll come along and he will put you in a place of what I call transition. He will turn your life around. Anybody know that for real, that God can turn your life around? I ain't talking about what somebody told you, but how many of y'all can just take a moment and look back over your life and say, Preacher, where I used to be, thank God I ain't there no more. God has did a work on me. God has brought a change in my life. There's a difference since I have met Jesus. He'll come along, church. And he'll turn your life around. He'll rock your boat, somebody said. He'll rock your boat. And I want a system. And, and I want a God that will come up in my life every now and then and shake things up. I want a God that will come into my life every now and then and rock me and shake me so that I don't get complacent. So that I don't get complacent. So that I don't get stuck over here and feel like this is all that God wants me to do. But I want a God that will come into my life and say this is not all that I have planned for your life and so the way that God provides is through his own hand and when he does it according to Exodus 16 and 14 they said what is this what is this when he said the manna they said what is this it takes a while to know God's ways church don't it say in your Bible that our thoughts are not his thoughts? And our ways are not, it's in your Bible, right? And our ways are not his ways. As high as the heavens are from the earth, so far are his ways from our way. They say, what is this? It takes a while to figure it out. And sometimes we won't figure it out. Sometimes we'll just have to do like the old songs say, and we'll understand it better by and by. Some of us want instant success, but the truth is sometimes God got to reposition you and you're used to getting it from one way from one source and then God will come and say child I'm about to reposition you and if you'll trust me and if you'll obey me I'll bless you even the more for eyes have not seen for ears have not heard neither has it even entered into the heart of man the things that God got prepared for them that love him see we always want it one way have it your way. That's how we want it. You know, we always want it one way. And, and if we lose our job or something happens, we freak out. And, and we don't trust God like we ought to trust God. And the truth is, when he's sitting down the matter, the Bible says, if you read it, it's an interesting text. It said that if you had a household of two, that he was seeing basically, if you study it, it's two quarts of manna every morning. Enough to feed per person. So that would be four quarts of matter for a man and for his wife. But maybe the house next door has six people. Well, God would increase the manner for that house. So it wasn't equal to what he gave to the other house because they didn't have the same amount of people. It was according to how many people that were in the house that God provided for them exactly what they needed. The next day, which by the way, when the cloud moved, it wasn't that they were so spiritual, but they understood if we ain't near the cloud, we don't get no food. If we ain't near the cloud, we don't get no food. We don't get no nourishment. We don't get what we need if we get away from the cloud. Now, here's the point. God says, I'm about to give you bread from heaven. But I don't give you the same amount to everybody. 
God is not a respecter of persons. Understand me when I say that. I'll give and I'll prosper you, he says, according to the size of your assignment. If your assignment is two people, he'll give you enough for two people. If your assignment is six people, he'll give you enough for six people. If the assignment for the church was a hundred, God will give us what we need. And if you are faithful with what God will give you, church, guess what? He'll increase you and give you a little bit more. I want to remind somebody today that if man's hand is no longer blessing you, that you have the hand of God that is always willing to bless you. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19, we are so used to quoting that, but my God shall supply all your needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. But wait a minute, stop. you need to back up and go all the way back up what he's talking to. And he said, you Philippians became my partners in giving time and again. Then he says, therefore, my God shall supply all your needs. So he promises, God promises that if you are a giver, if you are a generous person to the kingdom and the work of God, I will supply by my hand, I will supply your needs according to my riches and glory. And the third way that God provides, everybody say, God will provide by the hand of man, by the hand of God, and even my own hand. You see, Joshua chapter 5 says, and the manna ceased. The manna stopped coming down, y'all. God wasn't providing for them the way that he used to provide for them. And the manna ceased in chapter 5, I believe around verse number 12, it said, and the manna ceased. It's time to panic, y'all. It's time to, after 40 years of everyday manna, then, and then it just stopped. What is God going to do now? God said, I'm changing you. I'm repositioning you. I'm getting ready to bless you. And you like for everything to stay the same. You would have never left that other job that you were on. So I know what I'm doing in your life. God said y'all would still be down there in Egypt had it been for you. But God says I want to do a new thing in your life. That's why I came down there and delivered y'all from the hand of Pharaoh in the first place. And God says I'm about to move you. From depending on the hand of men to depending on the hand of God. Depending on God, church. At some point, and you know, when we think about depending on God, we think about everything being miraculous. But everything is not miraculous. And we need to stop living off wanting stuff miraculously. And God says, I'll bless you from my own hand. And the man of cease and God says, I'm about to transition you. And I want us to write this down and go back and look. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse number 9. He says that I'm taking you into a land that is flowing with milk and honey. That's what he told me, y'all. I'm taking you into a land. That is flowing with milk and honey. And the next verse says, he says, but the land that you are about to go into is not like the land of Egypt that you came from where you sowed your seed. And the strange little phrase right there, and water by foot as a vegetable God. That is a direct reference to what they call the foot pump that were down there in Egypt. And God said, you know what? The way that y'all had to work for that stuff down there in Egypt, guess what? It's not going to be the same way over here. You have labored and you have toiled. You have gone through down there in Egypt. But guess what God said? Now I'm taking you to a land that's flowing with milk and honey. God said, I'm taking you from the outhouse and I'm bringing you over here to the in-house I'm gonna do a new thing in your life because you trusted in me y'all God is good and I don't know about you but I want the goodness of God to flow in my life whether you are on a valley this morning or whether you are on the mountain. He even said, he even said, I'm going to take care of you. He told him over there in Deuteronomy, if you read it, Deuteronomy chapter 11, when you have an Egyptian mentality, you are always praying SOS prayers. Somebody, somewhere, come and help me. 
Somebody do something for me. Somebody deliver me. But I think we all ought to get to a place in our Christianity to where we stop looking at other individuals to give us this and to give us that. I believe David found himself in that very same strait. David said, I looked up there in the north. There was war up there in the north. Look down there in the south. There was war down there in the south. East and west, there was war. David said, I'm not going to look to the north, to the south, to the east or the west, but I'm going to lift up my eyes unto the hill from which they come my help and not some of my help but all my help cometh from the Lord God of heaven and listen if you ain't there yet ain't no shame in it that's why you're here this morning that's why you're in church so that you can get the faith that you need church that's why we're here so that we can strengthen ourselves so that we can trust God to do what it is that we need him to do. Let me tell y'all something. When trusting in God will take you a long way. Amen. Depending on God. How many of y'all can say, Preacher, you ain't got to tell me. I trusted him a time or two. And you, Preacher, you ain't got to tell me what it is that God will do in your life. Preacher, you should have met me a time ago. I was broke. I was busted. I was down to my last down. But look at me now. I got $2. Now look at me. God has been good to me. Preacher, I was down on my luck. I wasn't trusting God. I didn't have faith. But God has delivered me and he has brought me to where I am today. That is the goodness of God. God's goodness, church, is not just all about his grace. You know, we love a gracious God. Him just giving us stuff. Like Santa Claus. You know, I think a lot of us think God is like a genie in a bottle. Lord, I just, I put him back on the shelf until I come back. And that second time, I want three more wishes. You know, you know we, 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 we run to God in time of adversity. We run to God in time of famine. We run to God in time of lack. But let me tell you, you ought to be a person that even when you are up on the mountain, just like you, just like you travailed and just like you prayed unto God when you were down in the valley, you ought to have that same spirit when you are on the mountaintop. You ought to have that same spirit when you are doing well. Because let me tell you, don't get so used to the mountaintop that you don't know how to survive in the valley. Because let me tell you, life is not always about the mountaintop church some days you're gonna be up and some days you're gonna be down some days you're gonna feel like fighting and some days you're gonna feel like giving up but having done all to stand you gotta stand therefore and trust and wait on the Lord be of good courage and he says strip in your heart church the Lord will make a way the Lord will make a way for you, church. Some of y'all have experienced deaths in your family, close family deaths and, and, and relationships that you have lost. And maybe in that moment you had the mindset, I'll never get over this. I'll never be able to make it. But look at how God has made a way for you to not forget about that thing. But God has made a way for you to be able to deal with it. Some of y'all have had your hearts broken. Some of y'all have had your minds messed up. The Satan has got in your mind and he's planted doubt in your mind and uncertainty but thanks be unto God he said in his word I'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on me so devil when you thought that you had a chance you ain't got no chance because I'm already wrapped up in the arms of God I got shelter from my savior on high church I'm glad that I serve a God that will provide but there's a last one, a last way that God will provide. God will provide for you by the hand of your enemy. Preacher, you for real? Yes, I'm for real. Serious is a heart attack. I'm serious. Twelve went into the promised land. Ten came back saying, the giants are too big. But two came back and said, our God is able. 
And somebody brought up the giants and in numbers it said they spoke up and they said those giants are bread for us. Isn't that amazing? That God will provide for you even through your enemies. God said they're bread for you. What does that mean? God will feed you through the hand of your enemy. You will get to a place to where you will feed off the attack and people will be trying to do you wrong and people will be trying to do you in and instead of going off you will say may the Lord bless you and may the Lord bless you real good. You just not leaving a wonderful service on Sunday. Soon as you get out of here, somebody calling you with some junk. Child, I am too blessed to be stressed. Don't be calling my phone with no mess. I am a child of God. I am a child of the King. And I thank God for what he's doing in my life. He said, two came back and said, you know what? Our God is able. Are you more like the 10 or are you more like the 2? It's too big. We can't do that. I, I, I'll never be able to achieve that. I can't get there. Or will you say boldly that my God is able? That my God is able to supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. What does riches look like? Well, the Bible tells me that the cattle on a thousand hills, the silver and the gold, it all belongs to our God. It all belongs to him, church. And we've got to get the attitude. Like he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 10, it says this. Now he who supplies the seed is the sower. And bread and food and supply will multiply the seed you have sown. God has given all of us something that we can use, church. See, necessarily all the time ain't got nothing to do with money. Some of us can give of our time. We can give of other talents and other resources that we have that can be a blessing to the kingdom of God, that can lift up ministry, that can help other people to get through what they're going through. Because I dare not have you believe that that trouble that you went through was just for you, but what you went through was actually a testimony that can be a blessing in somebody else's life. And all your trouble wasn't just about you. You need to share that with somebody else because somebody else needs to know, hey, if I'm down on my luck, that I serve a God that is able to deliver me from what it is that I'm going through. You went through the test so that you can have a what? A testimony of the goodness of God and what it is that God can do in your life. And that's the power of God, church. That God will come and he will pick you up, turn you around, place your feet. I, I ain't talking about sinking sand. I'm talking about a solid foundation. I'm talking about something that you can stand on. I'm talking about something that you can depend on. Something that you can trust in. And child of God, I implore you this morning out of everything that you can depend on. Some of us depending on our job. They might fire you on Monday. Some of us are dependent on our 401k and all this other stuff. The stock markets might crash and inflation might go up and what you thought that you were going to have, you may not have. You may lose this and you may lose that. But I know something somebody that the Bible says he'll stick closer than a brother. Church, he'll be with you always, even through the end of the earth. And even when you are at your lowest, God will provide for you. He'll make a way, church. He'll make a way for you. And let me tell you, we serve a God, church, that's so good. You walking through the fiery furnace of life. Got smoke and fire that's all around you. And folk knowing that when you come out of that, you're just going to be tore up and, and depressed and all dejected and down on yourself. And you coming out there looking fresh as you was before you went up, before you went up in the fire. You coming out, you ain't even got singed on you. You ain't even got the smell of smoke on you. That's the kind of God that we serve. Some of us find ourselves this morning, even in our own lion's den. But you remember the story of Daniel? When God is with you and when God is going to provide for you, God made them lions get locked jaw. Daniel used them lions as a mattress and a pillow. Let me tell you, church, there's nothing that you are experiencing. There's nothing that you are going through that God cannot. I make a way to get you out of that thing. Therefore, have no temptation overtaken you, but such as is common to man. 
God will, with the temptation, church, also prepare a way for you to escape. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad I found my secret place. I'm glad I got a hiding place. You know what? People may be around me, but guess what? When I go in my secret place, can't nobody find me. When I'm in my secret place with God and all of us got to learn how to have our own little secret place. Let me tell you, sometimes I put my secret place in the car. Sometimes it, I might be in the kitchen cooking bacon and I'm just, in, I'm just in my own little secret place because my mind is not on the troubles that I'm facing because those same troubles that I got, they're going to be waiting on me. And my, my mind is not on my burdens because those same burdens that I have, they're going to be waiting on me. But my mind is set on Jesus. My mind is set on what God is doing in my life and I recognize had it not been for the hand of God had it not been for the goodness of God I'd be on my way to a devil's hell not fit to live and too scared to die but I'm glad that I serve a God that will make a way that will provide that will sustain the church God used an unlikely situation to be a blessing. Amen. They thought that they were getting rid of him. Yeah. They thought that it was going to be the end of him. Yeah. Just because they sold him off. We're not going to see no more of him. We're done with that. Ain't got to hear no, about, no more about them dreams that he be having. I'm walking around here looking raggedy. I ain't got to see that coat no more. It's covered in blood. Ha ha. That's how the enemy does when he do stuff. Ha ha. He's laughing. Not even knowing that God was using that very situation. Because y'all realize, had that not happened, and the famine taken place, it would have killed everybody else, so Jesus would have never came on the scene. <laughs> so God had to even use Joseph to make sure that the Savior on down the line would come into existence. And I'm so glad he used that situation. And I'm sure even in Joseph's mind, he thought the worst of it. I'm going to die in here. Even after it was looking up for him, here come the old devil in the form of Potiphar's wife. She came in there and got the man. He's in prison. He's interpreting dreams. People are forgetting about him. People are forgetting about him until the time came. Let me tell you, God knows, church, just how long to leave you in the struggle. God God knows just how long to leave you and what it is that you are experiencing. So don't you dare have the attitude this morning that this thing has been going on for so long. No, it's going on just as long as God knows it needs to go on because apparently the reason that it has not ended yet is because there's something in your life that God is trying to teach you. God may be trying to work on you. Maybe there's something in your life that God is not pleased with and he's trying to take that thing out of your life. Let God God, work on you, church. Let him work on you. Let him do a work in your life. I'm glad that he'll make a way, church. I'm talking about ways out of no ways. Some of you know what it's like to be between a rock and a hard place. Some of y'all know what it's like to, to be up at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and your mind is so weighed down with the cares of life that all you can do is just walk backwards and forwards and cry. Backwards and forwards and, and wringing your hands together and asking God, when is it going to change? Lord, when is it going to get better? When are things going to be different for me? God is saying, child, just wait, just wait. I got you on the backside of the desert right now, but after a while, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. But while you're here, trust in me. I know you may not understand. I know you may say, well, preach, I, 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 well, Lord, I just came off of the mountain. Why I got to go through a valley? I just came up out of the valley. Here come a hill. Why do I have to deal with this? God is saying, be patient. Trust in me. And he said this. He said, you trust me. He said, you know what? I'll do a new thing in your life. I'll do it if you are trusted me. Now the problem comes when you have doubts in your life. You know, we sing the song, if you trust and never die. He will surely bring you out. 
Take your burdens to the Lord and that's what some of us need to do this morning. You need to take your burdens to the Lord. You can't handle it. You can't do anything with it. That's why you're almost cuckoo for Cocoa Puff now, trying to, trying to fix stuff, trying to solve stuff. You got people in your life. Them folk been doing you wrong all this time. You just trying to change folk. and try, You need to get to a place in your life to where you recognize, I can't change nobody. I can't change the outcome of anything. But what I can do is I can trust in God. What I can do is I can lean on him in all of my ways. I can acknowledge him and he will direct my path. Because the word has already said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, to give you a hope, to give you a future and an and expect it in. That's what he said. And I'm glad, church, that he'll make a way. I'm glad that he will make a way for us. Even when we don't know. You know we still in the midst of a pandemic. You know that, right? He made a way for you to not end up in the number of those that have succumbed to the virus. And if that's ain't enough for you to give God a praise, don't leave him by yourself. If that ain't enough for you to give up, don't you leave him by yourself. You call you an Uber, get a lift, catch a ride with somebody, don't go home by yourself. Because children of God, see our problem is you waiting to hit the lottery before you give God a praise. You wait, you wait before you get that job that you always wanted before you give God a praise. You waiting until you get that car that you always wanted before you give God a praise. But if God has been good to you, you wake up in the morning, I bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the earth and be glad. I'm going to magnify the Lord because he's been good to me. And because he made a way. He deserves my worship. Because he made a way, he deserves my praise. And I'm going to give it to him. Let me tell you, ain't no rock going to praise me. I don't know about you, church. Ain't no rock going to praise me. Because let me, if you don't praise me, there's some rocks out there across the road that got enough sin to open up their mouth because they recognize I wouldn't even be here on the side of this road had it not been for God putting me out here. If they got sense enough to pray, if the birds got sense enough to do what it is that God told them to do, if all of this stuff, why is it that we, that were created to worship him, won't do what it is that he's commanded of us to do? Let me tell you, church, when you learn to get your mind off of all of that other stuff, and just when you get in here on a Sunday morning, you come in here and you just go into worship. You give God not, uh, not half of a worship. You give God your best worship. Let me tell you, it might not sound like Mahalia Jackson, but you ought to sing just as loud as the one that's singing like Mahalia. Yeah, I mean, you may not be singing like nobody else, but you ought to lift up your voice, make melody in your heart, because it's going up before God as a sweet-smelling Savior, as a sweet-smelling aroma, and God is getting, he's getting the glory out of your worship. Not only does he get the glory out of your worship, he gets the glory of church. When you trust in him, when you depend on him. And I'm not talking about trusting him just when your refrigerator is full. Gas tank on F. Got $25 in the bank account, you know. I ain't talking about just trust him then. I'm talking about when all hell has broken loose in your life. I'm going to trust him. Let the wind blow as hard as it wants to. I will be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of what I shall not be moved. Let whatever I shall not be, I'm going to stand right here. Because I know after a while, God going to make a way for me. He's going to make a way. But you got to wait on him, church. You got to wait on him. You look at people in the Bible. That woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. We have a headache for 12 minutes. We're ready to give up faith. <laughs> We re we ready to turn in our baptismal certificate just because we didn't have a headache for 12 minutes. Where, where is your faith in God? I, I, know you, I know you've been here, but where is your faith in God? 
I know you, you can quote John 3.16 and all that, but where is your faith in God? When the times get tough and when life is not all that you thought it was going to be, where is your faith? When you thought it was going to work out, you had all your plans lined up, man, I just know it, and it didn't work out. Where's your faith in God? When you had put all of your trust in them, you loved them more than you loved yourself, you loved them more than you loved God, and you found out they were not who you thought they were, where is your faith in God? He's waiting on you this morning to trust in him. Lord, I know I got all of this stuff going on in my life, but I'm going to trust you. Because I know you can do it. How do I know that you can do it? Because you've done it before. So why I'm going to start down him now? For he is, the Bible says, the same God yesterday, today. And he'll be the same God even forevermore. Maybe somebody here this morning, you need the Lord to make a way for you even today. He's willing. He's ready. and He's able even today to make a way for you. I'm so glad that he loved us enough that he did not allow us to just leave us out here on our own with no help, with no hope, with nothing to look forward to. But he loved us enough, Deacon Campbell, that he said, you know what, ain't nobody down there worthy, so you know what, I'm going down there. I'm going to go down there and make a way for my people. I'm going to go down there and set up a way so that my people can be saved and so that they can enter into everlasting life. I'm so glad that while they were standing out there, out there on the coast of Caesarea Philippi and, and all of that stuff going on, then in Matthew chapter 16, and when Jesus walked up to him, he began to ask him some questions. He looked at him and he said, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? He said, well, some say that thou art a liar. Some say that thou art John the Baptist. So Jeremiah, one of the other Old Testament prophets, he said, well, that's all well and good. He said, but in the face of all of these idol gods, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but rather my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto you that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. What you need keys for? I'm going to use them on the day of Pentecost. When there were people gathered together on the day of Pentecost, Jews from the doubt nation, you had Parthians, you had Medes, you had Eliamites, you had dwellers in Mesopotamia, in Cappadocia, and Asia. All of those folk had came together and Peter preached unto them the gospel of Jesus Christ. And after he preached, they said, men and brothers, I heard all that you said. And I'm not convinced, but I'm convicted in my heart that what you're saying is true. Now, men and brothers, what shall we do in order that our souls might be saved? Peter looked at him and said, repent and be baptized, some of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be. Are you trusting God for your salvation this morning? How many of y'all recognize, hey, you're not good enough to live it by yourself. You need God every day of your life. Because let me tell you, they catch you on the wrong Monday morning, you might not be saying there's a name I love to hear and I love to sing his word. You may be saying other things to people because of the mood that you're in. That's why you got to stay close to Jesus. You better keep that religion. Don't lay it down. This morning, you need to trust in him. Trust God for your salvation. Trust God for whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is that you are going through, even right now. God is able, church. He's able to save you even this morning. I can't save you. God is the only one that can save you. How does he save you? Through his word. The Bible says that the gospel is God's power to save. And he's able to save you this morning. Those of you, if you're here, you've heard the word of God. My question is now, do you believe what it is that you've heard? If you believe what you've heard, my question is now, were you willing to repent of your sins? What is that, preacher? It is a giving up of myself and of my old ways. And I want to be what it is that God wants me to be. I, I, you know, and, and, and I'm not just going down a, a wet devil, a dry devil and coming up a wet devil. 
but there's actually a change that has taken place in my life. You've heard it. You believe it. You're willing to repent of your sins. Now you're willing to confess with your mouth that Jesus is the son of the living God. I didn't say Muhammad was the son of the living God. I said, are you willing to say that Jesus is the son of the living God? Are you willing to make that confession? And if you're willing to make that confession, my question now is, are you willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins? Therefore, as many of you have been baptized into Christ, you have been baptized into his death. God wants to do a work on your life this morning. He needs to operate on somebody today. Are you willing? Are you ready to let God do it? It's the question. My brother, my sister, maybe you're here this morning, you're subject to the invitation, or maybe you're, you're already a Christian and you're just standing in the need of prayer. You have that opportunity to come and request prayers. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow, but rather today that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Come to Jesus now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Without one plea, but yet thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bid me come to. gospel is preached and the water is very sweet. I look forward to seeing you. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer.